Welcome back. In this uh, lecture 15, I will talk about the remaining part of the energetics uh, portion briefly and then talk about thermodynamics of chain growth polymerization, molecular weight distribution and quickly go through these different processes of making radical chain polymers and some common polymers synthesized by radical chain polymerization. Now, this is we learned in last lecture that because when the conversion of a radical chain polymerization is high, the termination reaction actually becomes lower and lower because it become the termination react, reaction becomes diffusion control because of the large size of the propagating radical and high viscosity of the reaction medium. As a result, gel effect happen which is basically a certain increase in the reaction rate and increase in the molecular weight of the polymers getting produced. And we also discussed that the gel effect happens at lower and lower concentration when the monomer concentration is higher in the medium. Now, we assume that we were able to remove the heat which is getting generated from or as a result of the polymerization reaction from the reaction medium. So, we are assuming that we are doing the reaction in isothermal condition. Now, sometimes what happened that this reaction propagation reaction or polymerization reaction are exothermic. So, when the reaction happens heat gets generated. So, unless we can not unless we can remove the produced uh, heat very effectively there is a possibility that local heat get accumulated and the temperature can go up in the reaction medium. So, we then call that is a non isothermal way and in that case we know that the rate of polymerization also depend on this expression. So, we can rearrange the expression and put this on left side and plot this Rp by Mi to the power half with a conversion or time. Now, if there is no effect, if this Kp, Kd and Kt are there is no change in temperature, then this reaction rate constant will remain same. So, this should be also remain fixed. So, that is happen when we can remove the heat from reaction medium very effectively, but if we cannot remove the heat, then the temperature goes up and as a result this uh, composite reaction rate as we discussed for a thermal initiation this also goes up. So, as a result reaction rate goes up. So, this is kind of a auto acceleration because we are not able to remove the, the heat from the medium the reaction rate increases and as a result further reaction happens and further heat gets generated and more and more such reaction happens. So, this is called auto acceleration and this might lead you eventually a gel effect because the reaction rate becomes higher. Of course, in this case because reaction rate is much higher the molecular weights actually can produce which has produced that might be lower. So, some some cases gel effect might happen or some cases gel effect may not happen. So, these are two independent phenomena of course, some, some text might uh, uh, mention that auto acceleration and gel effects are same, but these are actually may land up in same same um, situation, but their origin actually are different gel effects because of the viscosity of the medium which becomes high and the reaction becomes termination reac reaction becomes diffusion control, whereas auto acceleration happens because non isothermal condition as we remove we cannot remove the heat from the system properly the temperature of the 
reaction medium goes up as a, as a result the reactions also goes up. We will move to molecular next topic of molecular weight distribution and I just want to quickly bring uh, the step growth what we have seen from. So, dispersity from step growth polymerization we have seen 1 plus p where p was the conversion functional group conversion. So, the fraction of fun functional groups which got reacted or consumed during reaction. Now, there is a little difference in case of um, degree of polymerization value in case step growth. In case of step growth we know the degree of polymerization is number of molecules at say time is equal to 0 by number of molecules at end of the polymerization. Now, that is because in case of step growth polymerization we have discussed many times that the entire mass entire reaction medium is my product we do not isolate the monomer and oligomer or anything. So, basically we whatever is the number of molecules at the beginning and what is the number at the end of the polymerization which means the average number of molecules per polymer chain is given by this. Now, in case of chain polymerization we know that it is not the entire reaction product it is the isolated polymers from the reaction medium. So, in this case we know this is total number of monomers reacted not present at T 0 reacted divided by total number of polymer molecules. So, there is a fundamental difference here we are talking about total monomers have reacted or polymerized and where this year we are talking about at total number of molecules at t is equal to 0. So, please keep remember that is because the polymers the product of step growth polymerization is the end of um, the entire reaction mixture whereas, in case of chain growth polymerization this is the isolated uh, polymers. Now, we have also known that in case of step growth polymerization p is maximum can be 1. So, d is always theoretically close to 2 because it cannot go beyond 2 because p we also know that for getting high molecular weight p required to be close to 1 for a step growth polymerization. So, d always close to 1 for a high molecular weight polymer sample generated from step growth polymerization. We will talk about chain growth polymerization now ex uh, exclusively and uh, so we will we know this is the expression for um, kinetic chain length which is related to molecular weight and degree of polymerization. Now, as we discussed earlier that the molecular weight or degree of polymerization depends on the ratio of um, concentration of monomer by i to the power half. Now, as the reaction proceeds this value this ratio changes or may change as a result we have also mentioned it earlier lecture that as a measure the, the as a result of change of value of this ratio the size of the molecular weight which is getting produced at the different time of polymerization might be different as a result we might get a diff high or large polydispersity or dispersity value but at time we will restrict our discussion on low conversion assuming that this concentration of monomer and concentration of initiator remains same at low con con low conversion. So, at low conversion we assume that concentration of monomer and I uh, is constant and in case of low conversion in polymers we have two situation once if we consider the termination by combination reaction then the degree of polymerization will come as 1 2 by 1 plus 1 minus p and x w is given by this and dispersity is given by this. Now, p is little different in this case, 
where p is the probability that a propagating radical will continue to propagate instead of terminating. So, basically it is the chance factor the probability that a propagating radical continues to propagate instead of terminating. Now, a radical propagating radical can do three, three basically types of reaction one propagation another is termination another is transfer reaction. So, the probability is given by rate of polym propagation or rate of polymerization rate plus rate of divided by rate of propagation plus rate of termination plus rate of transfer. Now, if the termination is given by uh, or by disproportionation or, or chain transfer or a combination of these two, but without combination or coupling then we have this expression and dispersity is given by 1 plus p. So, dispersity we is given by for first case when it is exclusively by combination or coupling we have this and the second case where we have either by disproportionate or by transfer reaction we have this value and p is given by this expression. Now, as you remember in case of when we synthesizing high polymer high molecular weight polymers then rate of propagation is much higher compared to rate of termination or rate of transfer. So, this value p is nearly equals to 1 nearly equals to 1 when I am synthesizing large polymer chain. So, p in this case will or the dispersity value in this case will come around 1.5 and in this case dispersity value comes around 2 when I am synthesizing large polymer. Remember we are talking this for low conversation region, low con, con conversion region. Now, so the maximum value the upper limit of a and if there is a mixture combination of these two happening in a reaction mixture it will be somewhere in between 1.5 to 2. So, the highest value or the limiting value can be 2 the limiting value or upper, lim upper value of this city should be 2, but in, in effect when you synthesize the polymer by radical chain polymerization we actually see the value of dispersity is much higher it is generally between 2 to 5. Now, that is 2 to 5 now that is because we know this uh, factor which determines the Xn value as this keep on changing with more and more polymerization happening the chain sizes or the molecular sizes keeps on changing as a result for the total or total entire polymer sample we get a large distribution which is around 2 to 5 and if gel effect happen gel effect happens then it goes can goes even higher because we are getting now uncontrolled molecular weight very large molecular weight. So, it can go 5 to 10 and if branching the, the chain transfer happens to polymer chain transfer to polymer happen chain transfer to polymer happens then we actually generate branches and lots of high molecular weight sample and in this case we can get a polydispersity index or dispersity as high as 20 to 50. So, normal case low conversion we should get a this dispersity value is between 1.5 to 2, but in real case when we synthesize a, a polymer sample we get a dispersity value between 2 to 5, but if gel effect happen then my polydispersity can go even higher and if the chain transfer to polymer happen it can go even higher. Now, I move to next topic now is this thermodynamics of polymerization and uh, we know we consider about this del G del H del S for polymerization reaction and in this case del H this term is uh, the difference. So, del is difference between 1 mole of repeating unit in polymer minus 
one mole of monomers. Now, if the repeating unit content contain two monomer residues for like in condensation polymers like PET, PC, then we are talking about one. See if you, I'll come back again. If I talking about a synthesis of polystyrene molecule, then it's one mole of styrene in polymer minus one mole of styrene as a monomer. If you talk about polyethylene terephthalate, then one mole of terephthalate repeat unit which contains of both terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol. So, one mole of that repeat unit minus one mole of terephthalic acid and one mole of ethylene unit. So, you should remember when you talk about this del H, del G, del S, we are talking about this difference. Now, thermodynamic properties of a polymerization relates only to propagation step since polymerization consists of single act of initiation and termination and large number of propagation steps. It is mainly the propagation steps which involved and most cases chain polymerization happen for alkenes or double bonds becoming double bonds of the monomers becoming single bond on the polymer. So, pi bonds is converting pi bonds of the monomers is converting to single bond as a result del H value is negative it is exothermic reaction and as the monomers are getting tied up in large polymer molecule the entropy is lower because of restriction in degrees of freedom. So, eventually if we combine these two you will see that most cases or almost every cases for chain polymerization of alkenes delta G is negative. So, thermodynamically this chain polymerization is a favorable, um, favorable uh, process, but not whether a monomer will polymerize or not that will depends on kinetic factor which we discussed uh, in the beginning of this module that depending upon the electronic factor and the steric factor and which initiation mechanism we are employing to initiate the chain. So, all these factor will come in, in combination to see whether a chain polymerization actually takes place or not. But thermodynamically a chain polymerization is a feasible process because of large exo, large basic energy gain because of in large exothermic uh, heat evolved in this polymerization process. Now, till now we have been talking about mainly polymerization, polymerization or forward step monomers are reacting with the radical and becoming uh, a higher radical. Now, there is a possibility that the reverse reaction may also happen. So, we can consider the depolymerization also. So, in an equilibrium and thermodynamic point of view we should consider the both the polymerization and depolymerization reaction. And so, we can write this uh, forward reaction like this and backward reaction which is called de depolymerization reaction. So, we have rate constant corresponds to polymerization reaction forward reaction and we have a KDP which is for the backward reaction. Now, if we plot so the forward reaction depends on the forward reaction K R polymerization depends on K P M and M dot and the backward reaction depend on K D P M dot the concentration of radical species is same in both cases. So, basically we should compare between this term K P M and K D P because both cancels of both side this is common both side. So, if you plot if we plot K P M with conversion with time or conversion then sorry this is with temperature so 
So, if you plot if we plot this term forward reaction with temperature we know for a thermal initiation it actually increases with increasing in temperature. Now, the reverse reaction also increases with temperature and so if we plot the reverse reaction in other axis then we can see that it also increases with time. But there is a temperature range where the reverse reaction is almost negligible. So, if you talk about doing a reaction in, in, this, uh, in this part, then we have a negligible amount of reverse reaction or depolymerization reaction, only forward reaction is happening or polymerization reaction is happening. But in, in theory, we can have a temperature which is called say T c for time being, where the degree of forward reaction or rate of forward reaction actually same as rate of backward reaction and we get net polymerization is 0. So, in this case we have the equilibrium where rate of polymerization reaction and rate of depolymerization reaction is same. So, in this case we have reached the equilibrium and if we plot the difference between these two the forward reaction and backward reaction then we can actually write uh, or draw something like this where this is the difference of K p m minus K d p. So, up to this temperature it is mainly the polymerization reaction after this both reactions take starts taking place and in this temperature actually both becomes equal. So, no net polymerization reaction happens and we call this temperature as ceiling temperature. We call this as a ceiling temperature. Now, So, we will discuss more about ceiling temperature now. So, for this reaction if we talk about the equilibrium constant which will be given by the Now, we are not writing n plus 1 and n here because here we are talking about the total monomer total radical species in the medium hence this actually cancels out. So, we get 1 by m. So, at equilibrium at equilibrium k is equal to 1 by m to the power e. We should not ideally write this k, we should write q reaction quotient and we should write k this where m is the monomer concentration at equilibrium. Now, we can write del g naught standard Gibbs free energy. So, we can write r t c, t c is the temperature where this reaction equilibrium takes place. So, I can write R T C L N M E and we can expand this del Z not polymerization minus T C del S now this st standard state we are talking about this not which are the standard state now standard state for monomer is either uh, so standard state for monomer is either uh, uh, pure monomer or a one molar solution and for polymer 
it is either uh, again one molar solution e of polymer, one molar solution of polymer or a pure amorphous or slightly crystalline polymer. So, this is the standard state we should keep in our mind. So, we now know that okay, let me come back to this again. So, we have seen that k is given by 1 by e and if we continue continue our discussion so this this is a scenario where the equilibrium constant depends on the monomer concentration in equilibrium now you should remember that for every monomer concentration for every me we should have a corresponding tc is not tc is fixed for example if we take methyl methacrylate for pure monomer I have a T c value of 220 degree centigrade. That means, if I have pure monomer MMA in the system, then at 220 degree centigrade I have equilibrium, which means at 220 degree centigrade if we take the pure monomer and try to polymerize, it will not polymerize. because it is equilibrium. Pure, micro, pure monomer is the equilibrium situation in this case. If I talk about 20 degree centigrade, if I talk about T, T c is 25 degree centigrade, then corresponding con concentration it for more is 1 10 to the power 3 moles. Which means, if I do the reaction at 25 degree centigrade, then I can continue the reaction till the monomer concentration become this low. If I have the reaction at 110 degree centigrade, then this is 1.4 mole. So, which means please note the discussion that for every temperature, we have a corresponding equilibrium monomer concentration and when the temperature goes up, the concentration of free monomer present in the equilibrium actually goes up. So, as T c goes up, free monomer concentration in the reaction mixture goes up. Now, some, some literature or some people talk about this as the T c, which means you will you will see in some discussion or some text or some paper that the T c of MMA is uh, 220 degree centigrade. Now, the, they talk about when the situation for pure monomer concentration, but that is not correct. You can have T c for any temperature and a corresponding monomer concentration, but some text consider that this ceiling temperature as when the equilibrium monomer concentration is pure monomer. So, we this is I hope you are you are clear that as we increase temperature we can have a we can have a equilibrium for each temperature. So, each temperature can be a T c or ceiling temperature and a corresponding equilibrium monomer concentration. 
but there are some texts which consider Tc as the temperature where the equilibrium monomer concentration is the pure monomer. Now you can see that as Tc goes up the equilibrium monomer concentration also goes up. So, 220 degree centigrade if I want to polymerize monom MMA we cannot do because pure monomer is the equilibrium condition. We can quickly just uh, from the previous uh, equations we can quickly write uh, this uh, expression for Tc. So, T c goes up as del H is, is a negative exothermic reaction. So, this uh, goes up. So, that is what we discussed and if we want to find out uh, we can also uh, we can want to if you want to find out experimentally then we can plot uh, A me versus 1 by T c and we can get a plot like this from the exp expression I just wrote. So, the intercept would be del S uh, y r and the slope would be del H naught by r. I, there are some monomers which T c is for the monomer sample T c is very low. For example, if I take out talk about alpha methyl styrene, get a T c of at room temperature 298 K, I have say for this is I have written in last uh, slide 10 to the power minus m styrene and M e equals to pure monomer corresponding T c would be for M m a is we wrote 220 degrees centigrade for styrene 310 degrees and for 61 degrees centigrade. Which means if I want to carry out a polymerization reaction for M m a at 298 degrees 298 K the monomer concentration has to be over this concentration then only the forward reaction or polymerization reaction takes place. If the monomer concentration is lower than this for example, for alpha methyl styrene if the lower the concentration is less than this then we cannot carry out the polymerization reaction and this temperature is the T c for pure monomer concentration. So, if I start want to do a bulk polymerization that means polymerize the pure monomer I have to do a reaction at lower than 61 degree centigrade then only I can start the polymerization simple and also if you want to do a polymerization for MMA and styrene we have to do a reaction less than that. Now, there is also a 
false separation happen that if I take a poly MMA or polymethyl methacrylate above 220 degree centigrade that it will become monomer. But that is not possible because this reverse depolymerization reaction is the reaction of the radical present. Now, when the polymerization is complete, there is no radical present in the medium. So, the depolymerization reaction does not happen. But in case we have initiating, we are doing something, we are heating up or we are doing some initiating species, if we generate radical polymer radical in the system, then if I keep the poly MMA or polystyrene above this temperature, then the reverse reaction might happen and the polymer might depolymerize or we call it unzipping of the polymer. So, that you need to keep in mind that if we are doing or taking the polymerization which we do take during our processing polymer processing, we should actually devoid of generating radical species which might induce the depolymerization reaction. So, I will stop in this lecture and in the next lecture I will talk about uh, different processes of uh, synthesizing uh, uh, polymers by radical polymerization.